portion of developing compound archery, I'd like to talk about the fourth area, which is our equipment. Now, this is something that I think is compound's most focused area. This can be uh, seen in the amount of information available, and yeah, it's very easy to find information and opinions on compound equipment. For me, there are a raft of ways you can get that, YouTube videos, websites, forums, manufacturers, information, but beware. And that is because a lot of information is biased. We don't have a lot of information that is atypically, scientifically tested that often, peer reviewed. And that means it can often be people's opinions. And obviously even me today is, is giving my opinion. So, you know, I feel free to, to have a, a differing opinion about that. And I'm more than willing to discuss it in the question and answer section, but be mindful of where you get your information. Now, part of the issue for the Asian region, obviously, is the lack of Asian information in your native language. It is improving, but it's heavily RICO-focused. Most RICO coaches are scared initially, and many um, don't feel like, because the bow is a little more technical, that they're comfortable with it. This can come from the fact that there are more brands typically with the compound bow, and there's a lot more options and accessories with them as well. So companies are often changing or upgrading. There's often fashion trends that you will see come and go with compound equipment. And for me, it can be something that really blocks a Rico-focused coach developing their compound skills is just the equipment alone. So... It is good that the Asian coaches are learning fast. It's something that you need to be learning. It's something that you need to feel confident and comfortable with. You don't want to be unsure about how to fix your bowl and how it works. But for me, it, it's, ta it's taking time. And one of the things I do suggest is that you create a working relationship or a quality relationship with a local store. Now, that is some store that sells high quality equipment that has typically someone in that environment that can help you with your questions if you don't know the answer. I'm ready and always willing to pay a little bit more for high quality advice and skills in an archery store than I am looking for the cheaper portion or the cheaper equipment. So be very mindful of that. I do know the Taipei, uh, Chinese Taipei and Korean store system is a little bit different, but where you're interacting with um, an archery store, please try and make sure you look for quality and skills. Now, moving on to slide 40 in our sequence around equipment, I want to talk about the two biggest issues that I see um, in equipment worldwide and in the Asian region. So worldwide, I believe the biggest issue that we are seeing currently is excessive stabilizer weight. This is something you see in many archers worldwide, and it's somewhat been a trend started by some of our higher level athletes. In the Asian region, I think one of the bigger equipment issues that we're seeing is longer axle to axle bow. So the myth here is that a longer axle to axle bow is more accurate. And the truth is that's false. They are typically a little steadier perhaps because they have longer rises, but it does not necessarily mean that they are more accurate. So with the high quality, a number of compound manufacturers, the 37 to 31 inch bows, the shorter axle to axle bows, are more efficient and incredibly well balanced and accurate. So for me, with the Asian people typically being a little bit shorter, I think we should be seeing more shorter axle to axle bows in their hands than longer ones. Now, the same principle for the recurve I have for the compound, which is the shorter your draw length, um, which means the shorter the bow, or the longer the draw length, the longer the bow. And I've put up on this slide number 40 some simple uh, numbers that I feel uh, are nice ones to sort of um, help you pick the bow, which is if you have a 25 inch draw length or less, you should look at the, the short bows. And a short bow in my mind is a 31 to 35. 
inch axle to axle bow. The 28 inch and less draw length, a moderate or medium sized bow. You can run as far as 31, typically about 33 to 37 in the medium draw length is best, but you can get away with a longer axle to axle and a shorter axle to axle. You have the greatest range with this type of draw length. And then finally, the 28 and above. So the 28 inch draw length and above is typically what I would call the bigger bow. So that's anywhere from a 35 inch axle to axle all the way through to a 40 inch axle to axle. These bows are typically used by the bigger gentleman usually. Um, I, I have a 32 inch draw length, so I, I basically have to use a 40 inch bow, but I also have a wonderful 37 inch bow that fits me perfectly and is incredibly accurate. The images that I've used in this slide here of on the left, um, Chen Yi Xuan at the top when I first met her shooting a 40 inch axle to axle, through to when she made her second World Cup final shooting her 37, was quite a battle. Um, she and a lot of the archers in the team that have a shorter draw length really wanted to have that longer bow. They felt like it was more accurate. Um, but with time, and also you can see that from the woman in the bottom right hand side as well, she went from a 37 inch size bow to a 33 uh, FX style Hoyt bow. That took time, but once they realized the extra gains they had, which is the efficiency, the balanceability of that bow, the tunability, um, that's something that wasn't an issue um, once the team learned that. Now, your archers or you know your athletes may be doing better with this. This is just a general trend that I see in the Asian zone, and I think it is improving. So moving on to the worldwide issue of excessive stabilizer weight, and on uh, slide number 41, I can't express any more the extreme caution that adding excessive stabilizer weights can cause you and archers in your programs. It's been started by some of our world's best archers and is somewhat of a fashion trend, but can cause massive issues, especially around the posture and injuries with front shoulders and bow shoulders alike. So adding weights to your bow can be very helpful for your aiming, but it can draw your focus from the internal away into the external, so the aiming portion of shooting our bows. If you are interested in adding weight similar to the images you see here, there's excessive weight on the stabilizers of these two bows. You must do it in a slow and sequential way. Now, what does that mean? I prefer starting with quite light weights on the bow, just a handful at the front, three to four, and a simple ratio at the back, which is typically one to two or one to four, sort of in between that, and then adding as you go. Hiding some of your issues with weight can occur, meaning that if you stack a lot of weight on there, some of the actual technical issues with an archer can be hidden. So actually taking your weights off from time to time can be a very beneficial thing for you. Now, there are devices out there that can help you with bow balance. So the new Mantis device or the Sweet Spot out of the US are very interesting devices that can actually track your bow's movement and help you understand where your perfect stabilizer weight and length is, but be very cautious. My suggestion is being more balanced with your archer's shot and your activation style. So your body positioning and how you make that bow fire. So whether you're more assertive push and pull type athlete or a more passive sitting athlete in your valley or just against your stops. So be very mindful and try to think about this excessive weight. Variation in your timing with a heavy weighted bow. So this is a a bow that has a lot of stabilizer weight, if you vary the time that you're at full draw for, you can have some massive issues in the result of the arrow on the target. So my usual rule of thumb here is that the actual weight of the bow should be very matched to the size of the individual. I don't have very big, strong arms, 
Typically, I run very basic stabilizer setups for me. I can't go past pretty much six weights at the front of my 33-inch stabilizer for my bow. Uh, what I'll find is that I'll just have too much stress and strain on my front arm. But it needs to be tested. It needs to be done slowly and sequentially. Now, in terms of slide 42, the following slide, this is just a highlight of adding weight to your bow. So you can see um, in the image on the left, um, the Taiwanese or the, the Chinese Taipei athletes trying out Mike Schloss's bow, an archer that typically has a lot of weight on his, his bow. And you can see that it's, it's, it's hard for her to hold up. Now, it's well suited to Mike and his shooting style. He's proven that, that he's a very good shot, but it shouldn't be what any of those archers use because they haven't done it slowly and sequentially. And it's not how they activate their releases. What you can see on the right hand side here is an, a, an archer from the Asian region that also is shooting a lot of weight. In fact, more weight than Mike Schlosser is as well. For me, it's the more concerning image here is that having more than 30 weights on the front, almost up to 40 weights on the front, can be very destructive. So please be very careful about the weights and the balance you have. Try not to put too much on there as well. Now, moving on to uh, the sort of last area of equipment that I want to talk about is simple setups. So for me, I have a simple equipment setup that I like to follow. It's something that from an Asian coaching standpoint, I feel that most coaches should feel more comfortable with and not trying to uh, individualize too much and just understand how to basically set up a bow. And for me, it's around just a few simple areas, which is making sure your cams are timed evenly, that's both stops hitting at the, at the same time, that your arrow is centrally placed through the rest hole, that's both uh, vertically and laterally, that you have a simple sight level straight, that you use a simple scope, four to six power, 23 to 31 millimeters around, um, that your stabilizer length is nice and simple, meaning that when you stand there and your, your bow is basically about hip level, that's enough. Typically, you'll see around 27 to 30 for women in terms of inches for stabilizers and length, and men from 30 to 33, depending on their height. And the side rod is simple 12 to 15, typically 12 more for women, 15 more for men, um, with a simple weight ratio, one to two, all the way up to about one to four front to back is what I'm looking for. So that's if there's one weight at the front, there's two weights at the back. If there's two weights at the front, then there's four weights at the back and so on. Now that's the one to two ratio. In the one to four, it'll be obviously one at the front, four at the back, one at the front, or two at the front, eight at the back. For me, that is a nice, simple system to set up a bow. It's not difficult. It doesn't require a lot of massive changes in the bow. Um, and it's something that every Asian or every coach really should be looking to understand to develop their compound athletes. Now, for the arrow portion, just use your spine charts. Engineers and the manufacturers have spent many years perfecting these kinds of charts, and I trust them. Compound spine is less important than in the recurve bows. So you can use a spinal tool out and still be very effective. Some people don't agree with me with that, but atypically, the science says that's the case. Um, you can use selection software if you'd like to get deeper into that, and there's a whole range that exists. But for me, I just use the spine chart as my simple equipment setup. Now, in terms of the strings on the bow, most of the manufacturing strings are of good or very high quality. Uh, if you're going to aftermarket, use a reputable brand that, uh, you know, pre-stressing their strings, and you do get what you pay for there. And finally, the release aid portion of the equipment. Again, my simple equipment setup is, get a correct size that fits you, Set it to relatively heavier or moderate to heavy that promotes a more active shot as we discussed before.